Eric Lenask here at IT Expo in Miami, Florida. In the studio with me now from uh, NetSapiens, Anand Butch. Anand, uh, great to see you again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me again. It's been, uh, you know, really, I've heard a lot of conversation about, a lot of talk about how good of a year 2014 was. Um, and certainly, if you look at some of the statistics and some of the reports, um, you know, things like continued adoption of, of uh, unified communications, uh, adoption rates continue to grow, usage, usage rates continue to grow. Um, what, what did you see in 2014? So, to, to, to that point, Eric, uh, we actually had a, a, a pretty stellar year in 2014, and what we saw was the same thing. What, we've had a pretty uh, solid install base and a pretty loyal install base of service providers that are offering those services, and uh, what we saw was, we saw two things. We saw a lot of people actually now saying, okay, I need to get into the market uh, mm -hmm. because the competition is heating up. And then I also uh, saw a number of our existing clients that had platforms that were all experiencing steady growth, but it seems like last year there was definitely a pickup in the amount of applications that they were deploying and things were going beyond just you know, basic telephony. So people were looking at more contact center type deployments, uh, a lot more feature set uh, savvy of things that people were looking to do just beyond you know, basic business telephone services, a unified messaging, mm -hmm. uh, more usage of web portals to manage their systems and, and things of that nature. What do you think that's uh, reflective of? You know, what's driving that interest in these broader feature sets? So, uh, I, I think it's uh, a couple of different things. One, you're obviously seeing that the end user is getting that much more savvy. Uh, communication costs continue to uh, commoditize. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, you're, uh, what you're up against, and, and then plus you've got uh, the growth of your proxy large providers like uh, Ring Central and Packet 8, and, uh, and and that's becoming more and more the norm, is to say, I'm going to push all my stuff into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so I think from a competitive perspective, I think people are realizing they need to compete with that. So the competitive providers that we uh, uh, service that compete with those folks are obviously having to, uh, to keep up. So that's one thing. The second thing is, uh, in general, the people are getting smarter about the applications that they want. And the... Uh, the, the mobile side of the equation and the people that are running businesses use, you know, uh, getting into the workforce are that much more savvy, they're younger, and so applications and new things are coming much easier to them, and so there's not as much resistance to try new mm -hmm. things, so that's the other thing. So, you know, you mentioned a couple of times sort of the, the uh, next generation workforce, the, you know, the younger, savvier uh, uh, people coming into the workforce. Are they making, is the impact that there's a greater utilization of the tools that, uh, that businesses deploy uh, for their communications? You know, one of the, one of the problems has always been um, companies will deploy a unified communication solution, for instance, but nobody knows how to use it or nobody uses it because they don't know, they don't understand the benefits, they don't understand, you know, I don't, in order for me to use something new, I've got to understand how it's going to make my job easier, sure. or how it's going to make my, me more effective in sure. my role. Um, and for a long time, that sort of education wasn't happening. Is, you know, what you're talking about also reflective of the fact that there seems to be a more knowledgeable yes. worker base that's starting to actually use these capabilities? Yeah, definitely. I, I think. I think the, the base is just that much more mm -hmm. comfortable with uh, what I call mixed device usage yeah. or multi-modes type of usage, whether you're on a smartphone or an iPad or uh, a tablet or a laptop or a desktop. Uh, some of these applications span across all of these devices, but even your day-to-day -day applications now are becoming that much more portable. And so that has definitely helped, and, and people are just, like I said, less resistive to technology as a mm -hmm. whole. And some people are just not, they don't have a choice, right? Because everything is going in that direction. Right. And, you know, whether they like it or not, they're just having to, uh, you know, face up to it. Seeing a lot more people migrate a lot of their services into the cloud, just basic stuff, right? Email, mm -hmm. uh, people moving to uh, really kind of 
uh, if you will, very brick and mortar businesses that for years have just done things a particular way are now looking at uh, putting their email in the cloud and putting their CRMs into the cloud and, and just basic ba business functions are just naturally doing that. So then communications is obviously a big part of that also. And I think that uh, mobility is also playing a huge role. And you know, you mentioned the smartphones a moment ago and you know, just being able to have access to those communications resources wherever you are, you know, here in, here in Florida, um, as opposed to needing to be in our home offices, um, you know, again, makes it, A, makes it so much more effective, uh, but being able to have access everywhere, wherever I am, yep. makes it a lot easier to start using a lot of those capabilities. If I, uh, if I know that it doesn't matter where I am. That's right. It makes me a more, more effective uh, employee or colleague or partner or customer. That's right. Yeah, and, and th that's actually driving a lot of our development too, right? A lot of our clients who, uh, very much our kind of leading edge mm -hmm. service providers are the ones that are serving that market need and so the you know what we hear from them is a hey, mobility 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 we want more functionality that you guys have today and we want you to push it into other mediums so one of the things that we're showing at the show uh, here in Miami is the uh, you know the first uh, glimpses if you will of our mobile applications so we're definitely investing in the mobile world, uh, and so we're pushing that. Uh, uh, all of the applications that we offer today are, are getting driven into uh, now being able to offer the same services over a mobile phone, if you will. What are your thoughts around uh, WebRTC? What kind of a role or potential role do you think that's going to play? So uh, pretty disruptive. We, we are heavily involved in R&D on that side. Uh, we consider that as like many people do, a, a, a pretty significant game changer. Mm -hmm. But once again, I think the proof will be in the pudding with respect to how it actually get utilized. You know, we were at the WebRTC show last uh, uh, last fall, right? And what we started seeing was more practical usage of, of WebRTC applications. And so, our work once again is focused on taking our service providers, who are uh, regional service providers or you know, business integrators or things of that nature. Uh, and really looking at what are the practical uses of WebRTC, what can be drivers for them so that they can increase the utility of the product. Uh, but it's a, it's a big component for us and we, and we see it as a game changer. But once again, we're taking a very practical approach to it and saying, okay, what are, what are, the, real, uh, you know, what are the real tangible value that you can get from that? Good, well, it's certainly going to be exciting to see and fun to follow and see what does come out of all these conversations around WebRTC. Anand, thanks so much for being here at ITX. Great to have you on the show. Thanks again.